Hi everyone. So I'm going to do two lessons on these rational functions with quadratics. So this is part one, and the next one obviously will be part two. Basically, one of them you have your quadratic in the denominator, and the other one you have your quadratic in the numerator. And then the other function is just a linear. So it's like a linear function over a quadratic. So I've listed five steps of what we need to do in order to sketch this. So the lesson is just basically sketching it, but obviously once you sketch it, you can do all the other things like um, solve equations or, or inequalities or whatever you need to do. So this lesson is just going to focus on, on sketching this to kind of get an idea of what it looks like. So the first thing is the x-intercepts. Let's do them step by step. So the first thing I'm going to do here, first thing I'm going to do is find the x-intercept. Now the x-intercept happens when y equals 0. So this is 0. Numerator has to be 0. So literally all I'm left with is x minus 1 equals 0, x equals 1. So the x-intercept is when x equals 1. Second one, the y-intercept. Well, the y-intercept happens when x equals 0. So x is 0, 0, 0, 0. I'm left with negative 1 over negative 6, which is 1 over 6. So the y-intercept is y equals 1 over 6. 3. The horizontal asymptote. Okay, when the when the quadratic is on the bottom, the horizontal asymptote is always y equals 0. And the reason for that is the horizontal asymptote, and I explained this in the, in the previous rational functions um, lesson, the horizontal asymptote is basically what's happening when x is really, really big, or really really small so are, are really 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 large in the positive direction or in the negative direction well imagine x is a million then you're gonna have a million over a million million which is basically one over a million which is very 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 small so because this the degree of this uh, polynomial in the denominator is bigger than the degree of this linear function here as x gets really really large y gets really 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 small and it approaches zero. So you have your horizontal asymptote of y equals zero. Four, the vertical asymptotes. So the vertical asymptotes occur when the denominator equals zero. Um, I explained that again in the other in the other lesson, but it makes sense because if you think of as as the denominator approaches zero, um the function approaches infinity because you're dividing by a really, really small number. But you can't actually divide by zero, so you get an asymptote. Um, so this happens when the denominator the denominator equals zero. x squared minus x minus six equals zero. Now we're gonna have to solve this and we're gonna have two, we are gonna have two vertical asymptotes. So I'll just factorize this quickly. This is x minus three, x plus two x equals 3 or x equals negative 2. So these are my two uh, my two vertical asymptotes. And then finally, what I'm going to do is a sine diagram right now. This may be your first time seeing this. Um, so let me explain it, but it's, it's quite it's quite neat or interesting or it's going to help me sketch this graph definitely. So what I'm looking for is, this is like my, think of these as my x values, and I'm looking for my key values, so are the key points. The key points are the x-intercept, so this is, there's going to be one at 1, so let's say this is 1, and then these uh, asymptotes are x equals 3 or x equals minus 2, so let's go 1, 2, 3, this is 3, and I want... 0, negative 1, negative 2. So something like this. Now, at negative 2 and 3, we have asymptotes. So I'm just going to put a dot, dot, dot. That is my vertical asymptote, dot, dot, dot. And at 1, I have 0. So what I'm kind of, what I'm, what I'm doing with a sine diagram is I'm writing is the function positive or negative 
or zero or an asymptote. So here it's an asymptote, zero and an asymptote. I'm more interest, interested though, is it positive or negative? Because I've already got these. So when the function is less than negative two, is this function positive or negative? Now you can think of it as, well, let's think of a value. You could choose any value less than negative two and it will work. But you might as well, if it's saying any value less than negative two, and it's not going to change, there's not because there's no other kind of key point here. So it's not going to change anywhere below negative two. So I might as well pick negative 100 or even negative a million, but let's go with negative 100. If I have negative 100, um, so if I sub negative 100 in here, I'm going to have the numerator is going to be a negative value. And then the denominator is going to be negative 100 squared, which is 10,000 and then plus 100. Well, but I don't even have to do the calculation. I know that the numerator is going to be negative and the denominator is going to be positive. So if I get a negative over a positive, I get a negative. So everything less the function uh, for x values less than negative two is going to be negative and I, I put a minus sign or a negative sign. Between negative two and one, what's it going to be? Well, the easiest thing to put in here is zero because zero is between negative two and one. If I put in zero, I get one sixth. So here it's going to be positive. Between one and three, what's it going to be? Well, let's put in two. Two is the easiest value to put in there. If I put in two, I get a positive on the numerator, two minus one is one, so positive on the numerator. And then two squared is four, four minus two is two minus four is negative four, negative. So I have a positive over a negative, so this is negative. And then if I put in a, a, a number bigger than three, let's go with again a hundred, I'm gonna have a positive over a positive, definitely, so this is going to be positive. So that's my sign diagram. Now you're gonna see why this is very, very useful as I draw my graph. Okay, so let's get out, let's get out a set of axes here. Okay, now I know I have, there's some key points here ha happening at negative two, one, and three. So let's go, let's put in my asymptotes first. So I'm going to put in, I'm going to put in, I'm going to use different colors. Obviously you don't, you don't need them. Or just use dotted lines if you want, but for ne I'm going to put negative two, a vertical asymptote there and a three, a vertical asymptote. So that's negative two, one, two, three. Let's go here. Doesn't have to be perfectly accurate, but this is negative two and this is three. And at one here, it's going to cross the x-axis. So let's try and figure out what's going on here. So we know there is a horizontal asymptote at zero, so here. And we know there's a vertical asymptote at negative two. And we know that the function is always negative anywhere less than negative two. So what's going to happen is, look, I have a horizontal asymptote here and a vertical asymptote here. So this is going to approach this, approach this, and it's always negative. Fine. Next bit, between negative two and one. So between negative two and one, it is positive. It's also, I should have put in, it's going to cross the y-axis at one sixth. These don't have to be the, in, um, the x and y axis can have different scales, but whatever. So this is going to be, this is one sixth. So it's positive. Actually, I don't think that's going to work too nicely. Let's let's put that in after, right? But um, it's between negative two and one. It's positive, and it's going to touch the x-axis at one, and then it's going to go negative, and it has a an asymptote here. So what's actually happening is it's positive, so it has to approach this asymptote. Hang on, this is not 
drawn very well. It has to approach that asymptote there, and then it has to do this. Sorry, guys, this I just cannot accept that. Okay, so something like this. Now, here's my asymptote. Here is my asymptote there, whatever. It's going to touch, uh, go through, and here's my one sixth. It goes through one sixth, it goes through one, and then from one to three, it's negative. But again, I have this vertical asymptote, so it's going to have to come down like this and do something like this. So look, that is not a great drawing, but whatever, you get the point. So it's come down here, through one, and down like that. So here it's negative, fine. And then after three, it's positive. And again, I have my vertical asymptote here and my horizontal asymptote here. So it's gonna look a bit like this, but in the positive. So it's gonna look like this. Okay, that's it drawn. That is this function, x minus one over x squared minus x minus six. Now, if, I mean, depending on the question, if he says indicate um, equations of, of vertical and horizontal asymptotes, well then write down here at the side what your horizontal asymptotes are, are in your vertical asymptotes, or you can write here x equals negative 2, x equals 3, you can even put here y equals 0. And again, like you've shown, I mean, you, you, you will show your working here if I hadn't put that, I'd have put number three, horizontal asymptote, y equals zero. Okay, I want to just show you on Desmos what's going on here. So it's this, this is basically what I've drawn. We have our vertical asymptotes at negative two and at three. It's come down here through a sixth, that will be one sixth, and goes into the negative so it's obviously a better version of what I drew there are different um, this can look different ways so like here for example it went from the it went from the positive into the negative but it's possible for that to look these generally look depending on how things depending what these these letters are and I've added these sliders here just to change things and show you the transformations but I mean this doesn't have to go back into the negative. So depending on, I mean, obviously, calculating those equations of asymptotes and things change as you go through here, but these graphs can look slightly different. Something like this, it doesn't have a vertical asymptote because, well, if you did the math, the denominator doesn't have, there are no solutions for this to equal zero. So let's put that back to, oh, sorry, this was one. So you can change, I, I, I recommend you actually going around and playing with these um, just to see the different types that you can get. But the two, the two usual ones are the ones that I drew and the ones like this, where instead of going down into the negative, it comes back up. Now exactly what's this minimum point? Well, until you study calculus, uh, you won't be able to get that unless obviously you have a calculator. And that that's the final thing I want to say is obviously, if this is a paper two and you have a calculator, you can just sketch it or, or, or you can just draw it yourself with the calculator or use the calculator to solve any, uh, any questions or so solve any equations. Okay, that's it. In the, next, in the next lesson, I'll do the next type where I have the quadratic and the numerator and the linear function on as the denominator.